party people, Jay here with Carpe Pluma, going to be talking to you today about the Conklin Duragraph. I've got a couple models here. I've got the Amber for us to look at. I've got the Purple Knights. We're going to be spending a little time with both of them, so let's get started. Here are five things you may not know about the Conklin Duragraph. Number one. Innovator Roy Conklin successfully created the first self-filling fountain pen, which was promoted as a fountain pen with its own stomach. Uh, this pen was a crescent filler and was much loved by Mark Twain, who actually endorsed the brand in 1903. He claimed the brand was a great profanity saver because the crescent filler mechanism kept it from rolling off his desk. Number two. In 1923, the Duragraph model was launched and it quickly became the definitive Conklin pen. Uh, the name comes from a combination of the words durable and graph to make Duragraph. Uh, the pen was initially a lever filler and led to the creation of the Conklin Endura in 1924. Number three. These pens are made using a cast resin acrylic method as opposed to injection molding. This allows for much more depth and chatoyance in the appearance of the pen uh, and is usually reserved for pens in a much higher price range. I want to give you a little look at this up close so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Take a look at this pen here and just look at the way the light hits it and the way the depth of the pattern you know, it doesn't just look painted on the surface. It looks like the pattern flows throughout the pen. Right now, if we compare that to a pen like this, which is a pen in a similar price range, this pen just looks like the surface was painted on. Uh, so that is the difference, you know, in plain terms between what injection molding looks like versus a cast resin acrylic method where the plastic is cast into a sheet and then turned on a lathe. Number four, in 1955, the production of all Conklin pens was stopped. The business just closed up shop. Uh, it wasn't reopened until Yaffa Industries started it back up as the Conklin Pen Co. in 2000. Uh, they carefully followed all the old designs and created all the models just as they once were. Number five, uh, Jovo, Knox, or Bach number six nibs will all fit on this pen. Uh, you'll have to keep the same collar that comes with the pen and just slip the feed and the nib in, or you can get a completely uh, new nib unit system from Conklin for about $25, which is about half the price of the pen. So for the pen and the half price again, you can have basically two pens. Half price again, basically have three pens, or if you like to tinker a little more, get yourself a bunch of nibs, go to town, have a ball. If they're number six, Jovo, Knox, Bach, they're gonna fit this Conklin Duragraph. Now it's time for Anatomy of the Pen, where we take a look at the pen from top to bottom, finial to end cap. So let's get going with the Anatomy of a Pen. All right, if we take a look at the finial there, is where we'll start. You can see it says Conklin, established 1898. Uh, I want to jump right from here to the nib for a moment because I want to show you on here that it says Toledo, USA, uh, as well as Conklin on there. Now the reason I show both of these things at the same time is because while well, these pens are assembled uh, and shipped from Toledo, USA, they're manufactured, the parts are manufactured overseas. Uh, and the fact that it was established in 1898 kind of leaves out the fact that it closed down uh, for about 45 years. So a little bit disingenuous in some of the marketing there, Conklin, um, but we'll let it pass. Uh, so back to the pen and the anatomy of it. Uh, you can see that the pen has a flat top. It's got a very retro design to it, got a flat bottom as well, uh, not the cigar shape that we see uh, so often these days. Got the black top on the finial there, which gives way to a silver band, which is attached to the clip. Um, it is attached quite sturdily. This the cliff is quite stiff, um, which I like quite a lot. Uh, I don't really like a spring-loaded clip myself. I prefer it to be sturdier rather than a little easier to use. I just think it'll last a little longer that way. Uh, moving on to the cap. We've got that cast resin acrylic in the cap, uh, which is just makes for a really beautiful pen in this price range. Uh, looks to me kind of like a stick of fire. Um, hopefully that is showing up well 
on the video. Uh, as we move down the pan, we've got a silver band here, and let's see if we can get it to focus on that. We've got some crescents, and I believe that says Conklin on here, and it says Duragraph as well. Hopefully that's showing up. Try to get you a good look all the way through. All right, below that we've got about another centimeter or so of the cast resin acrylic, which gives way to the pen body. Pen body is made of the same material. Again, uh, quite beautiful for a pen in this price range. Um, you know, really in terms of the depth of this pen, it reminds me of the Visconti Divina Elegance. It's not on that level, but you know, that's a thousand dollar pen. This is a $50 pen. Um, so really quite nice looks for a pen in this price range. You can also see maybe that it's a bit translucent. Um, you can't really see through it, uh, but if you had a light source behind you, or if I had a light source behind me, you would be able to see that the pen is slightly translucent. Um, you can't really see what's going on in there. You can just see that there is something going on in there. So we move down the pen. Uh, near the base, we've got another silver band. Um, we'll probably steal silver in color. Uh, and then a black end cap here, uh, which, as I said before, has a flat bottom. Now, I'm going to take this off and show you something about this end cap, which I find a little bit bizarre. Um, when I saw this, I was sure that, like on other pens, this was going to be the type of thing where this went right down and click right over the top of that ring. Um, instead, this just comes down and rests right above the ring. Uh, it really makes for kind of a comically long pen. Uh, it is not well balanced at all in this position. So if you like posted writing, uh, this pen probably isn't the best for you. Um, if you do stick it on there, it will stay. You know, there's only, I don't know, not even a centimeter of the caps or of the pen sticking up into the cap, but it does seem to hold on pretty well. Um, but it's just a little weird to me that they've got that band there. And not only does it not go down and click over the band, but it doesn't even reach the band. And if I press it, even if I press it down hard, I'm going to get it stuck. All right, I uh, got it off there. Um, so a little bit strange in the posting behavior, uh, but it is a $50 pen. So there are going to be a few things about it that aren't quite perfect. So let's move on. Um, the cap does screw on. Uh, which I like and the cap screws onto the barrel not onto the section which I also like that's one of my pet peeves when you've got a screw on cap that screws onto the section and not the barrel I'm always afraid of my section coming off the barrel of my pen uh, just kind of a pain in the rear um, one thing to say about this is that while this is a threaded cap uh, the tolerance on you know how do I want to say this the tolerances aren't super, super, super fine. If you put this cap in a little bit crooked, put this pen in a little bit crooked and start turning it, it may turn and, oh, there, I got it to stick at just a quarter turn. Now, I don't know if you can see, but the cap isn't on there quite straight. There, there, it just popped. All right, so that happens one out of 10 times. Um, I haven't had that happen with other pens. I think that they just left a little extra wiggle room to avoid the potentiality of the cap getting stuck in there or the, the pen getting stuck in the cap or whatever else, not really sure. But I have experienced that a few times on this model and a few times on my Purple Knights model as well. So it's something that you may experience if you go with this pen. Um, the section is plain black. Uh, very common on a pen in this price range. Uh, I would have liked to see this beautiful material extended up, but that probably would have bumped the price up significantly. Um, let's take another look at the nib here. When I'm not talking crap about their marketing, you can see that in the little gold oval, oval there, it says Conklin. It's got a crescent-shaped breather hole, uh, which is kind of a trademark of the brand from the crescent filler days. And then below that, it says... Uh, Toledo, USA. Um, it is a steel nib, not a gold nib by any means, um, but it rates decently. Um, take a look at the feed or the uh, yeah, the feed system here. All right, let's take a little look at the guts of the pen. Um, there actually are a few interesting details in here. One of them, good. One, not so good, depending on what you like to do with your pens. Uh, the not so good thing is that the threads 
right here are metal. That means no eyedroppering this pen. Um, that probably would have been a little bit risky anyway, because I'm not sure how well this is all sealed up in the back, but you could have dripped some glue in there or something, I don't know, and made sure that was sealed up. Uh, but metal threads make the point moot. Uh, because they would corrode if you were to use this as an eyedropper pen. By the way, if you don't know what an eyedropper pen is, the basic idea is that you get rid of the cartridge or the converter, you turn the entire barrel into an ink reservoir, use a little silicone grease to keep it from leaking, and then you've got a giant fat daddy barrel of ink attached to the back of your pen. Um, so we've got metal threads here on the section, uh, but if that bums you out, maybe this will make up for it. Um, one really nice thing about this pen, especially in this price range, is that not only does it come with a converter, but it comes with a converter that screws in. Um, I almost like this more than a piston filler, uh, because you kind of get the best of both worlds. You know what goes with what. You're not going to get confused with your converters and your, your nib units. Uh, you know you're going to have a tight seal. You know that this is not going to drop off into your ink when you're filling it, which by the way is a huge pain in the rear if you've got to fish one of these nibs out of a bottle of ink. Not fun, you don't want to deal with that. Um, I don't know if you've ever had that happen, but it can happen and it's not cool. Uh, so all of those good things and then the piston unit of course has all those good things, but pistons can be a bit of a pain to clean. You either have to repeatedly, you know, screw it and unscrew it, screw it and unscrew it, screw it and unscrew it, or you need to take the pen apart. Um, with this, you can submerge this whole thing, soak it. This is easier to take apart. It's easier to flush. Uh, if you wear this out, it's not like wearing out the piston system in a pen where it's going to be a big, you know, expensive repair. You can just get a new one of these, um, but I have no reason to think this will wear out. It seems to be of good quality, uh, but it does screw in there, and that is a nice feature. All right, so let's get this back on here, get this pen back together. And let's see, I should show you the Purple Knights as well while we're doing our anatomy section here. Everything else, everything is pretty much the same in terms of the finial, uh, the band here. Uh, you can see that we've got the black section the same. Obviously, the purple is different. Uh, the main difference is that this has the black cap. If you can see the difference in color there from the purple to the black, the purple isn't showing up nearly as well on the video as the amber does. Uh, for that matter, the amber does look nicer, uh, but it doesn't look... The purple does look to me a little better than it's looking on my screen right now. Uh, it does have a good degree of depth, of chatoyance, um, not quite as much as the amber, but still quite nice. So uh, there we go. That's the anatomy of a pen. Let's move on. All right, next I'm going to be ranking the pens on three categories, on looks, on feel, and on bang for the buck. So let's get started with looks. All right, my rating system goes as follows. One star equals Smurfette. She's beautiful, but she's two inches tall and she's blue. Two stars, Wilma, again beautiful, but a thousand years old, kind of old-fashioned, not exactly my type. Three stars, Tarangalila. She is a butt kicker of a babe. Uh, she does have purple hair and one eye and she's a mutant, so not quite perfection. Uh, and then four stars, we've got the pinnacle of beauty, Betty Boop, Boop Boopy Doop. All right, so what kind of a score do I give this pen? Um, first, I should say that if this was a rating of only pens in this price range, this would definitely be a Betty Boop. This is a beautiful pen for the price range. Uh, this could easily go in a collection with pens of a much higher dollar value and not stand out. Uh, it would look like one of the gang. Um, as I mentioned, that cast resin acrylic method is not often used on pens in this price range, so it is quite a nice looking pen. Um, what don't I like about the looks? Uh, nothing special about the nib, nothing special about the section, uh, but the body and the cap are nice. I like the retro design with the flat top, the flat bottom, uh, the silver accents are nice with the black on top there. Uh, all in all, just a very nice looking pen. Not terribly flashy. Um, you could bring this to a business meeting or into the boardroom and not look like you're showing off, but at the same time, this will catch a few eyes. Uh, so I would give this a three out of four stars in terms of looks. Uh, it does fall a bit short of a pen like the Davina Elegance, which got the four star, um, 
but it's way, way cheaper. So take that for what it's worth. All right, next we're gonna be ranking the pen on feel. We've got Kirk Van Hooten at one star, Can I Borrow a Feeling? Two stars, we've got Drake, In My Feelings. Three stars, we've got James Brown, I Feel Good. And four stars, Nina Simone, Feeling Good. Uh, so what does this pen merit? Well, uh, let me tell you. Again, for the price range, if this were just you know, a rating system of pens $50 and below, or that price range approximately, this would be a Nina Simone. Um, this pen, well, I've got a bit of a tale to tell. I ordered this one first. I got it significantly discounted, um, I think at about half price, and it arrived with a nib all screwy. Um, the tines were misaligned. They were misaligned quite badly. I was waiting for my loop to arrive. I had just gotten back into fountain pens when I got this pen. I had a loop on the way in the mail, and I didn't even wait for my loop to tune this pen. That's how bad the nib was. I could see it with the naked eye that the tines were screwy. Um, so this pen did not write well at all when I first got it. Now, when I made my minor adjustments, uh, which it was quite easy to adjust, or maybe I just got lucky, um, it was one of my first tries at tuning a nib, but uh, it wrote quite well, and it feels quite nice in the hand. Uh, it's got a nice medium weight. The plastic is very warm. Um, the feel is good. This is a very nice size for me. Not too big, not too small, kind of right in the middle. Um, if this had come with a perfect nib, uh, and like I said, price range, it wasn't competing with pens of a much higher price like a Mont Blanc Meisterstück, which, you know, it doesn't feel that nice, uh, then it might be, might be a Nina Simone feeling good. Um, the fact that one of them, or I should make a note of saying that the Purple Knights came with a perfect nib. Right out of the box, wrote great. Um, I've heard people complaining about Conklin nibs before. They're not known to be great. They're okay, they're fine. Um, but the great things about these pens is that, as I said before in my five things section, the Jovo, Knox, and Bach nibs will all fit. Um, if you're a Goulet pens fan, a Goulet nib will fit. Uh, so don't worry about the nib too terribly much if you've got any skills in taking your pen apart, switching things out. Uh, it's not too difficult to get a new nib on one of these pens. If you're not interested in that, then obviously you are concerned with the nib that comes with the pen. Even with that said, with the one bad one I got, it's telling that despite this being bad, I still bought another one because the overall feel and look of the pen was so nice at this price range. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a James Brown, three out of four stars, I feel good. Uh, not quite four stars and barely three stars because one of them came in with a bad nib, but we're gonna go ahead and give it a three. Next, we are going to go with bang for your buck. We've got a firecracker at one star. We've got a Molotov cocktail at two stars. We've got a hand grenade at three stars and the neutrino bomb from one of my favorite shows, Rick and Morty, as four stars. So what kind of pen or what kind of rating do I give this pen on bang for the buck? Well, I am glad to say that for the first time, I get to break out unequivocally my Rick and Morty Neutrino Bomb. These pens get a four out of four on bang for the buck. Uh, quite simply, at this price range, this is just a fantastic pen. Uh, the looks of it, the feel of it are great. I did get one bad nib, but I bought this steeply discounted, so I wonder if it might have been an open box return uh, that somebody dropped or mishandled. I don't know. Um, but the fact that you can get new nib units for 25 bucks uh, that you, know, you don't even need to slip the nib and the feed out of the collar, or you can just buy your own nibs and re switch them out uh, makes me not too concerned with the fact that that one nib was not good. And really, the feel of these and the look, especially of this amber model, is just, just incredible for this price range. So bang for the buck, definitely a neutrino bomb. Very happy to be able to give that rating. And on a pen that is very affordable, um, this might be a grail pen for some, depending on your budget. I don't know, you know what your station in life is, where you're at, but you could do a lot worse than having this amber pen as your grail pen. It's a beautiful pen. Um, and for only 50 bucks, it's within most anybody's reach. So, Neutrino Bomb, four out of four, boom.
All right, so should I buy this pen, yes or no? Well, I think you know what the answer is gonna be, uh, but I'm gonna start with the negatives first anyway. Uh, being a $50 pen, it's not gonna have quite the quality of a $1,000 pen. Um, that is evident in the way this can thread on crooked here, uh, and the fact that the posting behavior is a little bit strange, uh, and maybe in the fact that I got one that didn't have a great nib on it. Um, now, on the other hand, it rates the feel in the hand, the width of the pen, the warmth of the plastic, the weight, the balance, all are great. Uh, the looks are great. It's a very retro look, so if you're not into that, maybe you don't love the looks, but uh, I like variety in my pens, so having a few retro-inspired pens I think is pretty cool. Um, so I would say absolutely buy this pen. Carpe Pluma sees the pen. All right, I uh, hope this was helpful. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, that's gonna be all for me. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment below. I'm Jay from Carpe Pluma. Get your writing sample. Bye-bye for now. All right, party people, we are back with the Conklin Duragraph for our writing sample. We are gonna be using the Purple Knights because that has a nib that I did not have to mess with. Uh, so that should give you an idea of what kind of nib you're going to get assuming you don't get a bad one like I did. Um, so let's get started. The Conklin Duragraph. Purple Knights. with a rather thin medium nib. Um, it has got Mont Blanc, permanent black ink in it, and I'm writing on, as usual, HP 32 pound laser jet premium choice paper. Forgive my handwriting. It is not good. All right, let's do some figure eights. Um, well, first I should note, looks like we had a very slight, not exactly a skip, but a thinning of the line here. Um, and I thought that maybe there was one other place. Oh yes, at the top of the D. Uh, so they didn't skip. That was pretty fast writing, you know, big letters, big strokes. Um, so if you're writing small, uh, probably won't be an issue. This pen hasn't been a skipper for me, not something I've noticed with it, um, but the writing test doesn't lie. So here we go, some figure eights. Now that's just incredibly smooth for a $50 pen. Uh, definitely a fan there. How about a little backwards writing? Now this is quite good as a backwards writer. Um, better than the Mont Blanc even was. So if you're into backwards writing, you know, if you like to have that feature on your pens, I just wrote a full sentence without skipping once. Uh, so, you know, it's a little bit thinner than the medium, not a lot thinner to be honest, uh, but there it is, backwards writing. Uh, how about some cursive? Uh, let's see. The quick. Brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. All right, uh, how about a wetness test? Those are always fun. Let's go. All right, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, nine, one thousand, ten, one thousand. All right, so not a very wet pen. Let's go instantaneous here. Yeah, even instantly, not much smearing with that big, thick line on there. Um, let me get, make sure my hands are perfectly dry here. If I just write, uh, Carpe Pluma. Yeah, it's, I mean, for a left-handed writer, uh, it's not so dry that you're not going to have issues with it. 
I know a lot of left-handed writers have all sorts of fancy ways of not dragging their hand across the page, but if you are counting on being able to drag your hand across it, you're going to get a little bit of smearing, um, depending on how fast you write. Uh, so let's see, we have got our pen, our ink, our paper, our figure eights, our backwards writing, our cursive, and our wetness test. That looks like a writing sample. We're going to call it a wrap. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Carpe Pluma. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.